Hello, sixth graders. We are ready to start our first unit today. The past couple of days, we spent exploring all of the elements of art. And now that we are starting our first unit, we are focusing just on one. And as we explore each of our elements of art, we will focus on them for a couple weeks at a time and explore different uses of them. So we are starting with our line unit. And you should all have a line sketchbook. And it looks just like this. If you can go ahead and write your name and our on it for me. Our is really helpful because I have multiple people with the same name. And a lot of times they get misplaced. Or even if I don't have people with your name and they get misplaced, that way I can kind of help, help you figure out where to turn it in at, okay? So go ahead and get your name and hour on that for me. And then if you see, it is due Friday, September 8th. So that's actually coming up pretty quick, um, but your due date will always be in your sketchbook, so you will always knew, know when it is due. A couple more things about the directions. The directions on the first page of your sketchbook will also always tell you what pages we are going to do together during class time. So if you look, we are working on pages one, two, three, four, and five together in class. And what that means is I don't want you working on them at all outside of class time. So today we're actually going to complete pages one through four for our first project and then our second project we will complete page five. So I know it's going to be tempting to work on page five, but for you to understand it, I really need you to wait and we'll do it together in class time. Okay, and like it says, the rest of this book can be completed um, during extra time in class. If for some reason you should not be able to finish it during class time, you will have to take it home and finish it. All right. So it is due Friday, September 8th, but if you remember our grading policy for the art room, you can turn it in one week after that due date, and that would be Friday, September 15th. It also says that in Power School, and I will be happy to show that to you at the end of this presentation. All right, so let's start on page one. Line, the definition of line is it is the path of a point moving through space. So when you look at page one, here's what I need you to do. I need you to write the definition of line, the path of a point moving through space. Then I need you to go grab some colored pencils or markers from the cabinets. And I need you to decorate the word line using different types of lines, okay? Now, here's how you get all three points on this page. You get one point for writing the definition. You get two points for decorating the word. And if it's sloppy, you don't get all three points, okay? This is not a completion grade. You do get points based on effort, all right? If you need to pause this video for just a little bit so that you can complete page one, that's fine. And then you can pick up when you are done with page one. So now we're gonna talk about different types of lines, okay? And I know that you know what different types of lines are, but I wanna talk to you about how and why they are used in art. We call these expressive lines and they can be used to convey different types of moods. Horizontal lines are lines that run from left to right, straight across, and usually in art, we use them to convey, to convey a sense of calm. So if you think of a flag on a calm day, it's completely still, and the line is horizontal. If you were drawing a picture of a calm ocean or lake and the water was still, what type of line would you use? you would use a horizontal line. The second type of line we're gonna talk about is a vertical line. A vertical line runs up and down. This is used to convey sense of strength and power. A great example of this is many ancient buildings, and today our government buildings, were built using tall vertical columns. This is used to show strength and power. When a tree sounds safer for climbing, one that stands tall and upright or one that is leaning over. If a tree is bending, it doesn't seem as strong, right? But if a tree is completely vertical, it's, it seems a lot stronger. The third type of line is diagonal lines. Diagonal lines run a combination. They run up and down and left to right at the same time, and they can go either direction. So usually we use diagonal lines um, to show movement. And this artist, Vasily Kandinsky, used to use a lot of diagonal lines throughout his artwork. He used to create these abstract paintings and he would use diagonal lines to just kind of move your eye throughout his artwork. An example would be, if you're drawing a picture of a ball flying or a person running, how would you draw them moving to make it look like they're, they're flowing, it's flying through the air, 
or that they're traveling fast. You would probably draw diagonal lines behind it. Next, we're gonna talk about wavy lines. Wavy lines alternate directions. They usually show movement as well, but it's kind of to create a type of movement that shows energy. Bridget Riley was a pop artist and she used a lot of wavy lines to make your eye move. If you were gonna draw water that was flowing, you would use wavy lines. Spiral lines also show motion, but they can kind of be like a relaxing or hypnotizing movement. Um, Vincent van Gogh um, created the starry night when he was living in France, and he used a lot of wavy spiral lines. If you were drawing a picture of a windy day, to show that motion, you would draw spiral lines. Zigzag lines alternate up and down, and they usually show tension or pain. Now, if you were drawing a picture of someone and they might be frustrated, they might have zigzag lines coming out of their head. If you were drawing a picture of a saw, what kind of line would you use to draw for the blade? And broken lines or dotted lines, but we like to call them in art broken lines, are made up of a consecutive line segment. They usually show movement as well, um, but they are kind of drawing your eye in a particular direction, right? So broken lines are often appear on paper and they are meant to be torn apart. So a road is a great example of where you would find a broken line. So when we move to page two, all I need you to do is draw an example of each type of line. So I would like you to use crown or marker and you just need to go in this box and draw vertical lines. You just need to go in this box and draw horizontal lines. Diagonal, wavy, zigzag, and broken. Once again, it doesn't matter if you just draw them, it has to be nice and neat. You do not have to color this area over here. I just did because I think it looks nice, but you don't get any extra points for coloring this section over here. So you will get um, eight points for this page. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about descriptive lines. Descriptive lines can kind of help us understand what we're seeing in art. And this is where we take it from kind of basic level art knowledge to more advanced art knowledge. Descriptive lines um, are used to define areas in art. They're used to create movement. They're used to show different forms. And we are going to do a project just on descriptive lines. That will be our second project. But there are three we're gonna talk about today. The first one is gesture lines. The second one is contour lines. The third one is cross contour lines. So let's start and talk about gesture lines. Gesture lines are often extremely quick drawings done by an artist just to quickly capture an object's form and the movement of the object. I like to tell the story. When you attend school for art, you have to take a class called figure drawing where you draw people standing and posing or moving for hours at a time. And when I took this class, my teacher would tell the model to pose and we would have 30 seconds to draw the model. And then the model would pose again and we would have 30 seconds to draw them again. So if you're drawing this quickly, in order to get the entire object drawn, you would use a gesture line. It's very quick, it's not very smooth, it's not very polished, but you're able to tell exactly what you're drawing and you're able to tell the movement of the object. The second type of line is called a contour line. Contour lines are also known as outlines. They don't show them a great amount of detail, but they give you the outer object, outer edges of an object, kind of like a coloring page. And then the last type of lines are called cross contour lines. So in a way this kind of combines the two, um, but it's used to describe the, the object, like the form of the object, and it shows the movement of the form of the object. So if you've ever looked at a map and you've looked at like terrain lines, like how the lines move over hills and mountains, those are cross contour lines. And as you can see on the apples here, they are moving with the bumps in the apple and the shape of the form. So on page three, you'll see that I kind of put three examples for you. We have a gesture line right here. We have a cross contour line right here and we have a contour line. So for gesture line, there's a quick study of a person. For cross contour, there's a quick study of an apple. And for a contour line, there's a flower. So I need you to draw three quick examples of each. Now I know you're freaking out thinking, I don't know how to do this, but we're just doing a quick practice, okay? So if you would kind of like to copy these three examples, that would be fine with me. 
we're going to skip these for today. Okay, so let's talk about our first project. You're going to create a yarn and foil over leaf. And for this, we're going to use a lot of different materials. But today, I just want to talk about the design of your project. But I just also want to show you some examples so that you kind of have an idea of what is expected of you and what your project's supposed to look like. So these are some finished pro projects. And you'll see it all uses different types of line. If you look at the first example here, you have broken lines, you have wavy lines, you have curly lines, you have diagonal lines, you have zigzag lines, you have spiral lines. So we are only focusing on line for this first project, all right? So you'll see these are each student projects that were done in my classroom. And I just wanted to show you some examples. And if you look at your sketchbook page four, you'll also see that I put a couple examples at the top for you, all right? So here's what I need you to do today. And this needs to be done before tomorrow, okay? You are going to draw six different ideas for your line embossing projects. So you need to sketch out six ideas. If you'll notice, it's worth six points. In order to get all six points, you need to sketch out all six ideas. Here's what you need to do for each idea, okay? Um, you need to draw at least four different types of lines in each drawing. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like, okay? So if I go here, and this is gonna be on my computer, so it's gonna be a little hard to do, okay? So don't judge my, so don't judge my drawing. All right, so maybe I would draw a diagonal line first, okay? Um, and that would be my first type of line, all right? So that's one type of line, right? I have to have, how many? I have to have four. Okay, so now let's try, um, a horizontal line, okay? That's two different types of lines. So you'll see that I have now have two different types of lines. Okay, drawing this on my computer is a little hard, so stay with me. All right, so now I'm going to draw a wavy line, okay? So if you see, I have to have at least four different types of lines. Having four diagonal lines does not count as four different types of lines, okay? Um, let's see if I can draw another one on my computer. This app isn't very helpful. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Uh, maybe I'll draw a broken line. Maybe. 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 Okay, so I'm trying to draw a broken line. Can you repeat the same type of line more than once? Absolutely. Do you want two diagonal lines somewhere? Sure, that's fine. You just have to have at least four different types of lines, okay? So that could design technically could be done. You have diagonal, you have wavy, you have broken, and you have horizontal. But you have to draw six different ideas, okay? So you need to make sure that that's done and you can just use pencil. It doesn't have to be like the biggest design you've ever drawn. But if you'll look at these, they kind of fill their space a lot. Um, this person has spiral, zigzag, diagonal, curly, diagonal, spiral. So you can kind of fill up the space and do it that way. If you happen to finish before class is over, here's what I'd like you to do, okay? I'm gonna switch over to, um, I'm gonna switch over to the sketchbook and I'll show you what you can do from there. Okay, so you just completed page four. The next page in your sketchbook is page five. And if you remember from the directions in the beginning of the book, you're not allowed to work on this one. So you're gonna skip page five, but any of the rest of the pages you can work on today. Okay, you can work on page six if you want, which is just a color. You can work on page seven, which if you want to do today, um, the directions are right here. It gives you examples, and then you're going to complete that drawing on the next page. And then here is the last assignment, which is page eight. It's to create one of these hands. Um, there are step-by-step -step directions on the next page, and then you're going to complete that here, okay? The last page in your sketchbook is for me. So I will write comments if I need to. I will put your grade there for you, all right? Now, here's a reminder. You don't get these 14 points by sloppily drawing a hand. You're gonna get like two points, all right? So this is gonna take some effort. And this isn't due for a couple of weeks and really you only have three more pages to complete, right? Now, will these, these two take a little bit more time? Absolutely. But um, I would be happy to help you during class time anytime I need to. 
and you can just work on this for the rest of class today. And I will be back tomorrow and we will start our project.